Today we're going to be reading this. Before you guys jump into this video, I just do want to say that this is a very, very spoiler heavy vlog. So if you haven't read Throne of Glass or Akatar, um, both series by Sarah J Maas, I'd recommend skipping out on this video, coming back to it after you've read it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to start this video off by saying that. And an another little side note is I lost a lot of footage. I don't know where it went. I mentioned in the video that I kind of switched between cameras and I think when I was switching I lost some footage. There are some gaps which I am really sad about but yeah, half of me talking. I will see you guys at the very end. Do you want to preface that I am starting this vlog on my big DSLR camera that I used to vlog with years ago? So, if it's really bad, I apologize, but we're going to try to make it work. We are going to be reading this eight book series by Sarah J. Mass. She is one of my favorites, um, but I don't know if I feel like credible to say that because I've only read A Court of Thorns and Roses series, the five, I've read all five books. I do have A Crescent, A Crescent City, I think that's what that series is called, the duology, at least I think it's only two books. I do have that. I just haven't read it and then I do also like I said I have this <laughs> a book series but I haven't read it I feel like it's time to start this series I'm ready for a new fantasy and I've been seeing a lot about it recently so I feel like today is the perfect day I actually need to figure out like which book to start with because I know there's a whole bunch of stuff about reading order and like this is the right way to read it etc etc I feel like I need to do some research on which book I should start with first I think I am going to start with the Assassin's Blade just because everything that I'm seeing is saying that, that I should read it before Throne of Glass. I think, I can't remember actually how I got, I think, yeah, in the box set, Assassin's Blade came first, so I feel like I should read it. We're going to read the Assassin's Blade. I'm super excited. Um, it says Selena. Is that how you guys pronounce her name? I'm sorry. Lena Sardothian is her kingdom's most feared assassin. Though she works for the powerful Assassin's Guild, she yields to no one and trusts only her fellow killer for hire, Sam. When Selena's scheming master, Arab Ben Hamel, dispatches her on missions that take her from remote islands to hostile deserts, she finds herself acting independently of his wishes and questioning her own allegiance. She will have to risk it all if she hopes to escape Arabin's clutches, and if she fails, she'll lose not only She'll lose not just a chance at freedom, but her life. So it says a prequel to Throne of Glass, this collection of five novellas offers readers a deeper look into the history of this cunning assassin and her enthralling and deadly world. I think it's a good place to start. Um, I'm so excited to get into this series. Oh my gosh. I'm kind of scared though because I've only, like the only, um, fantasy realm that I've really been enthralled in is Akatar and the Red Queen. I think those are, I mean, and Shatter Me. Those are all like fantasy, I would say. And then obviously Twilight. But anyways, like Akatar has been like my comfort read for the past year and a half. Hopefully this one will be good. I'm worried that I'm not reading it in the correct order, but I feel like I just, I just have to start reading it and it'll be fine. Okay, I thought I would update. I read the first novella. It was called The Assassin and the Pirate Lord, I'm pretty sure. Basically, she just saved a whole bunch of slaves and she's with another assassin named Sam. They seem to like each other, but you can tell she doesn't want to like anyone. So I'm gonna keep on reading, but so far so good. I like it. It's fun. I think the point of these novellas are just to get us like a background of her. This is actually so good. I just finished the second novella. And now I'm going to start The Assassin in the Desert. I have no idea what it's about. The second one kind of told us that Sam is missing and Selena. Is that how you pronounce her name? I don't know. I need to figure out how you pronounce it. But she got in trouble so she was sent on this mission and that's when she met the healer who was like the second main character in the novella. Um, but now we're going to start the third one which is called The Assassin in the Desert. I think I already said that though. So updated in a little bit. I only have one novella left and guys it's good. I know that there is a love triangle in this series so right now the love interest is Sam but I know he's probably not going to keep being the love interest which makes me sad because they are really cute like they're both assassins 
and it's kind of like he's always loved her and she's finally just now realizing that she loves him but she paid off their debts um and so now they don't have to work for the like assassin king or whatever i'm gonna start the last one it's just called the assassin and the empire i'm excited to read it um i'm almost like done with this book it's kind of crazy i cannot guys so i just finished this and oh my gosh it was so good this is already spoiler vlog, so I can say this, but Sam died. And I wasn't expecting Sam to be the main character. Because from what I know, her name right now, I was saying Selena earlier, but I think it's Selena. That's what her name is, like, right now. But I'm pretty sure she becomes Aelin. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. And the love interest is Rowan. I don't know if those are two different people, but... So when we were introduced to Sam, I was like, well, that's probably not going to be, like, the end love interest. So... Like, I was expecting something to happen with him. I wasn't expecting him to die and her, like, I don't even know, Arabin? I think that's how I've been pronouncing it when I read. I wasn't expecting Arabin, who, like, has taught her all the assassin thing. Kind of like a father figure. But also it was like, he's a, he's a king of assassins, the father, and a lover. Like, he has all of those roles. And I was like, whoa. Um, not that they were lovers, but anyway. He was the one that did the ploy to get... Sam to be killed and then her to fall into a trap to be captured and now she's going to the salt lands or something like that. I'm assuming is where like the first book takes place because I'm pretty sure this book was published after the first book came out um just because everybody's confused on the radiant order but anyways I need a few minutes to process this so I think the next one I start is throne of glass oh it says two men love her the whole land fears her only she can save them all in a world without magic an assassin is summoned to the castle she comes not to kill the vicious king who rules from his throne of glass but to win her freedom if she defeats 23 killers thieves and warriors in a competition she will be released from prison to serve as the king's champion her name is Selena Sardothian the crown prince will provoke her, the captain of the guard will protect her, and a princess from a faraway land will befriend her. But something evil dwells in the castle, and it's there to kill. When her, com when her competitors start dying one by one, Selena's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival and a desperate quest to root out the evil before it destroys her, her world. I'm kind of confused, because that doesn't really sound like it's the beginning. So, I guess I just have to read. Also, I love a good map. And this one is just so cool. I'm gonna start this later, not right now though, because I need a few minutes. I thought it was a good time to update you guys the, whoa. I know the lighting is like really dark and stuff. Uh, apologies for that, but I don't think I updated you guys at all while I was reading the first book, Throne of Glass. This lighting is so much better, but I'm holding the camera. So if it's shaky, sorry. But I'm currently now on the second book, or technically it's the third book that I'm reading, but it's Crown, it's Crown of Midnight. So essentially what you guys missed from the first book is she, it takes place when she is at the Salt Mines, which I read the Assassin's Blade first, so that's where she had ended up. And she was weak. She had been there for a year. So she's now 18 years old. And she gets like sponsored. It's kind of like Hunger Games where she's sponsored by the king's own son for this competition of 24 people to fight to be the king's companion or not companion. What is it? Is it companion? champion i think it's champion but they basically just like kill people they're the king's personal assassin well obviously she won and there was a love triangle between the prince and then her personal guard and kind of like the king's guard um dorian and then i think it's pronounced kale and the prince i don't think either of them is like who she ends up with because like i said i know there's like aileen and rowan so i'm not necessarily getting attached but I also can't choose which one I like more. Like right now I want her to just end up with Dorian because he it's like he loves her. But then also like the guard is like really cute and they have this really good friendship. I'm still deciding. But right now um, this book takes place 
as she's the assassin for the king and we learn that she hasn't killed anyone she's basically been offering them like a plea deal where they escape and run away and never like do anything to get on the king's bad side again and that's dangerous because the king threatened to kill kale um and then her best friend because she made a new friend um but yeah i am just gonna read this right now i really don't have anything else to say i personally like selena um but yeah i've been enjoying this series so far i've rated both of the the two that i've read five stars i think this entire series is gonna be five stars for me but thought i would update you guys because i haven't in a while so yeah guys I didn't think I was going to vlog, but I'm on chapter 11, and right here it says she's confronting an old friend of hers, and she basically told him, like, she was sent there to kill him. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, it's out of focus. I've only heard my clients whispering about it every now and then, but there's a group that's formed right here in Rickfold, and they want to put Aileen Galathinius back on Terracine's throne. So that's her. Like, I'm pretty sure that's her. And so she's like, she's dead. She doesn't exist. Um, so that's not possible. But I know that it's her. So it's interesting. Hey guys. So it's been a little bit. I don't like that you can see my feet right now. Today's June 12th. And I have not updated in a while about reading the Throne of Glass series. I think a part of that is it took me two weeks to complete... Uh, both of these books I was reading the book so quickly as you guys can probably tell I was like reading a book within less than 48 hours and I think I would have finished the entire series before June if I hadn't gone out during Memorial Weekend but I completely had fun I'm pretty sure I already talked about that but yeah I tandem read these I used this guide I'll insert a photo of it and I would 100% recommend the tandem read personally for me it made the reading process much more enjoyable because if you guys like couldn't tell I obviously did not like Kale I literally knew it from the beginning that like I did not like him and Selena together at that point um I always had a preference for Dorian so I knew he wasn't my most favorite character I I will say I have grown to like him especially after reading Tower of Dawn and like learning more about him and seeing him like in a relationship that actually works for him I will say that was a little better but anyways um yeah so I finished these two and I have some thoughts I will say I didn't really record myself reading these because since it's been two weeks it's been very sporadic I've been reading it at work um it's literally been five days since I've been in my room like about to sleep in my room today I have been everywhere I've been staying at friends houses and working and just like been doing a lot so all I've been doing is keeping notes in my um in my notes app which i will say works because it does start with empire storms because i'm pretty sure this in publication order was the first one out of the two so empire storms it tells a point of view of a lead in Lor Lo Lo lorkin i think that's it lorkin a lead in lorkin um it tells a point of view of munin and um dorian and then Rowan and Aelin. And then you also see Adian and Lysandra. And yeah, so basically you get to see all of these characters. And then at Tower of Dawn, you see Ren and Kale, and then Nesrin and Sakal. Definitely be pronouncing these names wrong. We already know that. But yeah, Empire of Storms, I definitely prefer this book just because it had like the main character in it. And I'm pretty sure I've already said this. Munin is my second favorite character. Like I just love her so much. And like seeing her and Dorian like start a relationship in this, I was I was floored. I loved it so much. My notes for this is I had Aelin is a queen and the little Fay love her. and the little Fay love her. Um, and then I said F Dara though. So this is in the very beginning when she went to Tess Tesserin and was like, I'm the queen, like I've come to claim my lands. And Darrow, who has kind of like taken over the kingdom um, as a lord, I'm pretty sure he is. He was like, N no, like you have to prove yourself, which is like kind of like what we're seeing in the rest of this novel. Um, but yeah, the little fae, which in the first book, um, Throne of Glass, like, she had offerings, and, like, before I even knew that, like, oh my gosh, she's fae, you could see the little fae loved her, and so I loved, like, seeing a little flashback to that, because that's what it reminded me of, was the very first, like, actual book in the series, apart from Assassin's Blade. 
So yeah, I loved it. it. Said Dorian, assuming Rowan and Aelin are mates. Stop it right now. I can't remember the specific time that Dorian was like, oh my gosh, I think they're mates. Um, but that happened and it made me like gush because obviously they are. I love seeing Menon save Dorian. When are they going to F? <laughs> I can't believe I said that. They end up doing it later in this book, so there we go. <laughs> Lysandra is amazing. She has quickly become one of my favorite characters. I found that I just really love all the women in this series. Like, literally, um, Calton, Caltain, um, she was in the beginning of the books, and then we see her in, or I don't think we saw her in this book, but I think we saw her in the book before. Is that... Queen of Shadows, maybe? She had the word, the word stone, or I think that's what it's called. Literally forgetting the word key. Yeah, the word key. Um, which we find out that Caltain, I think that's her name. She had the word key, but she was just so powerful. I love Aelin slash Selena, obviously. Lysandra, Alid, Munin, um, Ren. Oh my gosh, all like great female characters, and I love to see that so much. I really... It. I said seeing Lorcane Lorcan um and Alid is kind of adorable and it's making me believe she's something very amazing which we find out that she is actually a lady of Tesserin that her mom actually was the one that saved Aelin's life like gave her time to escape so yeah and Alid and Lorcan they kind of like fall in love but then there's a betrayal and they are not okay right now then Aelin and Rowan finally gets X um so still can't tell if they know their mates or not so that was one thing that i was like oh my gosh but there was some biting and like some things turns out they are mates and aelin knew since he was shot in the shoulder when munin's i think it was her second in command shot him and that's when munin and aelin fought that's when aelin found out because she could feel the pain but rowan was so messed up for maid like messing with his mind that he didn't know until aelin was captured yeah she was captured. At the end of this book, I understand why people are like, it has such a big cliffhanger, because at the end of the book, Maeve takes her in replace of Alid because Lorcan exposed their location to save Alid. So like, it was a backup way of like, he was trying to save the person he loves, but he got Aelin captured. So yeah, that's why Alid and Lorcan are like, not on good terms right now, because Alid is obviously mad that her queen got taken away. So anyways, there's that. I find out and he's like, where's my wife? Because we find out they're married and now he knows that they're mates, but Aelin is being taken away. So I feel like this is like kind of the big points. They have two word, word keys now. Um, the witches have teamed up. Aelin was able to get all of her um, previous like allies and stuff into their side of the war, which included a lot of people from um, Assassin's Blade, including Anz Anzel, I think that was her name, that betrayed Aelin. Well, didn't betray Aelin, but betrayed like the Red Desert. And we also see the, um, the Silent Assassin, I think that's what he's called. But yeah, this book was so good. It is definitely by far the best one just because there's so much in it. Um, and we see like romance and fantasy and such a good progression in the story. So let's talk about Tower of Dawn. So, first off, I had written down, okay, I'm liking Kale more, really <laughs> realizing he hates himself. Him and Esrin ain't gonna work for me, though. So, starting into this book, we see Kale, he's in a wheelchair, he's been injured um, by the previous king of Ardalan. Um, and so, him and Esrin, who they haven't, like, they, they've kissed and stuff, but they haven't had sex since before, like, their previous relationship, like, eight years ago. But you can tell like they want to be together, so they go together down to, oh, where am I forgetting where they go? Antica? Yeah, they go to Antica, um, and this is a very like beautiful city. This is where Nesrin's family is from. And so Kale goes because they have the healers of Tor, and that's where we see Ren, which if you guys don't remember who Ren is, she is a person from Assassin's Blade that Aelin helped, Selena. It was Selena then. Selena helped Ren to get to Tor to become this amazing healer. And so we see the relationships between Ren and Kale, and then we see the relationships between um, Nesrin and Zeptaik. I forget his name. I'm so sorry. But I love both of these couples. I was actually really enjoying reading it, especially because Ren and Kale, I really like their relationship. We also learn more about Maeve. We learn that Maeve is actually not Faye. She is a Valg um, queen or something like that. So 
Maeve controls like those big spiders and all that stuff and so there is a lot to do with that in this book. Um, yeah, anyways, to see the Queen Wren again, Messerin and the Prince are very good together. Um, the shape, the shapeshifter person who sold 20 years of his life is in this book. I'm forgetting his name right now. Falcon? Or something like that. And it turns out it's Lysander's uncle. And Falcon is the one that Aelin got her spider silk from and was like, I'll kill that spider. But turns out Dorian kills that spider in this because I've already started reading the last book. So maybe that uh, shapeshifter now has his 20 years back. But yeah, and then Ren almost has been killed twice. Um, I don't know when I wrote that, but she was being chased by the Valg because she's like the best healer. And we would learn that healers are needed because they can take out the Valg like a parasite. If they just cleans the host. So it was Kale is growing on me. I ended up really enjoying him. I think he had a lot of good character development. He was completely healed and then he like almost died. Ren saved his life and now they're life linked. So if one dies, the other dies. And when Ren is powerful, Kale can walk. But when Ren is drained, he can't walk. So it's kind of interesting. Kind of reminds me of Feyre and Ryzend, um, or Resend. I know it's Resend, but I like saying Ryzend. Um, they make that bond that promise that if one goes the other goes and then she almost dies and he almost dies and so their kid would like not live anyways that's a quarter silver flames so maybe i won't leave that in because that's a spoiler but anyways basically it um for my two recaps i know those recaps were the best because i obviously didn't do them while i was reading but yeah i have started the last novel i started it yesterday I think and I am about 20% through. I'm about to start chapter 20. I honestly already forget what's happened. We see it, it's flashing forward or it's flashing between all of them. So Lysandra is pretending to be Aelin because she's a shapeshifter to keep the Tesseran like lords happy. And so we're seeing Darrow again which I was like he, I didn't like him very much. And Avian and Lysandra were kind of having a romance and he like had told Lysandra like I'm gonna marry you. I don't care how long it takes. I'm gonna marry you. But then he finds out that Lysandra and Aelin like made this plan. Aelin knew she was gonna be captured or she was gonna die. And so Lysandra was like, I can change that for you. And that was the entire plan. And Adian didn't like it. So now him and Lysandra are kind of having issues. And Rowan, um, Elid, Lorcan, and then Gabriel, I think that's how you say his name, who is actually Adian's dad, are looking for Aelin. And Aelin is in Don Donnell. Donanel, Don, uh, Nell, or something like that, and you can just see she's being tortured, and Fenris is there with her, um, also kind of being tortured, and Dorian is with the Thirteen, which is Mummin's, like, clan of witches, where he killed the, the spider, and they're trying to look for Crochins, because turns out Manon, Munnin, is a black beak, and a Crochin, so there's a lot there. It's, it's a lot, but it's super good so far. I'm excited to keep on reading because I just want to see Rowan and Aelin together again. I want to see Elid and Lorcan together. I want to see Adian and Lysandra together. And then I want to see um, Manon and Dorian together because I love all of those people together. Also, I'm so ex just excited to see how it ends. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep on reading. My battery is flashing, so I'm gonna go. But I will try to update you guys more since this is the last book and this video will be coming to an end shortly. But that that was very long-winded, but yeah. Hey, hey guys. If you can hear my laundry, sorry. I just started some. But I am currently, uh, it's currently two. I think the last time I talked to you guys was like around one-ish, maybe a little bit after one. No, I think it was around one actually. But I just grab some water i grabbed a snack i grabbed vincent and we are you can hear my siblings yelling too i read some more of kingdom of ash and oh my gosh guys um so much has happened already um so dorian apparently has like some shape-shifting like qualities i don't know i think he wants to use that so he can get into morith or morath however you pronounce it um and like him and Manon I'm pretty sure he I think they like each other more than like what they're doing which is just like benefits 
like I don't want to say friends with benefits because I don't really know if they're friends but they've just been hooking up but I feel like they care like a little bit more about each other but also I have no idea that might just be me romanticizing their relationship but yeah Rowan Gabriel uh Fenris Fenris why am I forgetting how to say his name Fenris a lead Lorcan, they saved Aelin, she got out, she survived, and Fenris broke the blood oath to Maeve, but Aelin gave him the blood oath, so I'm pretty sure he should be good, like he is alive and good, and yeah, she is rescued, she has enveloped herself like in a, in like a, um, fire flame like thing, like where no one can touch her, she seems like kind of freaked out, like she's not sane obviously because she has been tortured and stuff but Rowan is worried turns out like all of her scars are gone and if you guys have read the series or like I mean hopefully you've read the series if you're watching this because this is like very spoilers but um all her scars are gone which her scars like meant a lot to her because she reminded her they reminded her of like all the promises she made and all that stuff so I think that's important but yeah anyways I'm gonna keep on reading super good but just wanted to update you guys I feel like now's a good time to update because I just got to part two called Gods and Gates. So I am over halfway done. Holy moly, I did not realize that's all I have left. Essentially, a lot has happened. Aelin has finally showed her powers in the help in Ineli. I think that's how you pronounce it, which is where Kaol was originally from. Rin is pregnant and Aelin and Rin actually reunited like wow what lysander almost died and Aiden was like oh my gosh like i don't mean what i said but she he like went to apologize her and she's obviously like heck no like what you said to me was the most humiliating i've ever felt they're not good dorian has gone up to morath morath and manan was crowned the queen of witches and she said she would marry him she would marry him and he still left. I think they have a thing still, hopefully, because I love them together. Um, what else? What else? Oh, Lorcan and the lead are good. They're they're good. And yeah, I feel like that's kind of it. We are. I'm like this chunk is going to be the war in actual like Terrison. Terrison. I swear I pronounce it differently every time I read it, but. Yeah, super good. I can't believe this is all I have left of the series. Okay guys, I'm crying. Um, crying for the first time. Um, this book is so good. Um, Munin's 13 just sacrificed themselves. And Asterin told Munin to live, so. Sorry, but. It's really good. I'm also listening to a Throne of Glass playlist, and the song playing right now is Everybody Wants to Rule the World. So it's like the perfect song to be reading that scene. But I'm gonna keep on. I'm gonna keep on reading. Okay, so she did it. She's alive. She lost like all her power, but she still has her droplet, like her healing power. And she also has a little fire that the god Mala gave her. I still have some fire, it's just not like as much as it used to be, so like that always sucks because like Sarah J. Moss has done that before, like taking away power from the character. But anyways, it's super good. Rowan essentially saved her by tattooing word marks on her back. And so super good. I'm gonna keep on reading though because I feel like I feel like I'm, I can definitely finish this. Just finished. I just finished. Okay, sorry, I had to watch all the TikToks I've seen about the series, but yeah, I have completed the entire Throne of Glass series. I cannot believe this. I don't really have words to process the series. It was literally the best thing I have ever read. Like, I think it's like one of my favorite series.
I already want to reread it. I teared up. I didn't actually have like tears coming down, but I did tear up in this last book. And oh my gosh, I... Like I literally have no words. I think I might have to just like come back to this and talk to you guys later because I'm just... I'm shocked. First off, I want to say if you guys watched this entire video, thank you so much. I know there was a lot of like sound issues and of course a lot of spoilers and I lost a lot of clips, but I do really appreciate you guys going ahead and reading. I enjoyed this series so much and would 100% recommend it. Hopefully you guys are only watching this if you're done reading the series. I know when I read really good books, I like watching reading vlogs just to see if other people experience the same feelings that I did. And I just have to say, I loved, I loved the story so much. Um, I thought it was amazing and I'm so excited to read the last Sarah J Moss uh, series that I haven't read. I'm definitely going to do a reading vlog when I do read that. It might be a little bit because I'm currently kind of in a romance kick right now, but yeah, I overall, I know in the last club I was like very overwhelmed because I just had finished an eight book series. I had, I think I read it over three weeks and yeah, that could have been shorter, but still it was an amazing time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you guys have read the series. Um, I really hope you have because I'm going to feel bad if I spoil anything for you, but I've given you, <laughs> I've given you plenty warnings, but yeah, anyways, I will talk to you guys very soon. Peace and love. Bye guys.